Hey, NFT Plaza's community. It's me again, Jake. Asher J, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm a National Geographic Explorer turned tech entrepreneur. And I wound up starting my tech effort as a direct result of the pain points I was facing from the previous work I was doing. So thus far, I've taken over mass media conduits worldwide to break stories with brands, nonprofits, and government agencies on how people can participate in the solutions that are needed through better consumer spend. So if you are buying, for instance, illicit contraband like ivory in China, the person who can afford to buy that is the same person who can afford to buy a Rolex watch. So then you partner with Rolex to break the story on a billboard and people who are keen on buying a Rolex and being part of that community don't really want to be seen as the people who are also killing elephants and are opposed to Rolex. So it tends to dissuade sort of the social currency around doing something that's not warranted behavior, that's helping the world at large, and then bringing them towards a better community standard, right? Um, and that essentially means that we need accountability, we need transparency, and we need to see how many people are actually shifting behaviors, how are they shifting their dollars spent, and that's where blockchain technology comes into place. And also Web3 looks at it from a bottom-up stakeholder perspective, and for me that's really important in the impact work I do. So if I'm working with brands, brands want to see how they're engaging their consumers, how they're engaging the people on the ground, and whether they're actually being catalyzed toward solution shifts in the world in a systematic way. So my platform, Hennessine, which actually bookends the era we currently live in, it's called the Anthropocene, the age of man, which I think should be done. So Hennessine is the age of unity, which is the Greek word henosis, um, and it brings together everybody towards a solution set that allows for social and environmental solutions to be part of our everyday dialogue. Interesting. A Definitely lot. a lot there. A Definitely lot. a lot there. Yeah. And actually something we were talking about off camera is like very interesting is how is your background at National Geo? It's it seems like a lot of the social impact stuff I can see. Right. But kind of what about, you know, the skill sets, you know, the passion. Right. How did how did your Web2 experience kind of bring you into it? So way National Geographic or any of the communities on the ground work on telling, telling the stories that matter, we usually use IoT devices that connects back to a centralized data platform, right? And we need AI ML to correlate that information and distill it in a way we can use it. Otherwise, researchers are spending a lot of time, which is why Google even has something where they can actually allow you to sift through vast amounts of trap cam footage and tell you which one of those photographs have wildlife in it. So I don't have to spend as a time as a researcher my whole day just looking through empty pictures and all of a sudden there's a tiger, right? So technology is a huge part of how we come up with solutions on the ground. But Web3 takes it a step further because it actually democratizes the way people can show up. Like you as an individual come to matter, not you as a data statistic, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that level of importance being assigned to a person from the toe up matters in today's world because it's about engaging people as real time shareholders and stakeholders in a global context that we all need to be participating in, in helping move forward in the right way. Otherwise, like it's the tragedy of the commons. When something goes missing, like the tigers, you also stand to lose tigers in the world just as much as I do, right? It's and but nobody owns tigers. Yeah. We all have to own it together. And Web3 allows for co-ownership in that way. I see. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. So the social impact stuff, the tech stuff, all very, very, very fascinating. But what's what kind of what kind of gets you up in the morning, right? Is it, oh my God, I'm going to make such like a social impact, such a, such a big change? Oh, I think, I think we like have a tendency in the world to like in Web2 especially do things that have always been, right? And Web3 is about disrupting what has been. Like current economy doesn't work. Political system is failing. Our financial system is deplorable right now, if you've seen with the SBB collapse even, right? Okay. Our banking system is a disaster. None of these things are working. So we have to come up with alternatives the alternatives cannot be anchored in what has been. So there has to be outliers who ask for accountability for genuine shifts at a source level so we don't continue coping with that which does not work and we actually cure what needs to be cured. And I think my passion comes from looking at real-time deterioration. I've been out in West Africa and East Africa, traveled to the front lines. I've seen what is you know lost on a daily basis, um, places that I love, people that I've connected with that no longer have a context to be. And it's really painful to wake up to realities that are coming at the cost of countless lives that we are just not aware of, 
right? And people just go on. You wake up, you go buy a cup of coffee, you just live your life. You don't realize this is happening in the world too. And I think for me, my passion is about bringing that to your awareness so that you can care beyond just having a cup of coffee and living your life about the lives that are happening elsewhere too. And for that, it needs to be about education. It needs to be about inclusion. And it's about bringing it to people where they're at. So while you're having a cup of coffee, how can I interact with you in a manner that makes sense to you? That's what I looked on, on answer. No, that's, uh, that's awesome. You're almost trying to facilitate like an almost like societal shift of mindset. Like, yeah. Instead of me just going, you know, it's obviously there's a, you know horrible things going on in the world, but does that impact me like from a day to day? Like, you know, probably not, right? So, you know, what I love about what you're trying to do is you're basically trying to make a societal mind shift of, hey, all of these things that are happening around the world. We need everyone to kind of come together and make sure all of these things get fixed if we want society to move the needle. Yeah, um, and, and care about the world you live in because, you know, you, we all have one place that we're sharing as a biosphere. And whether we like it or not, you know, how much you know affects how I get to live my life, how much I know gets to affect you as well. And so if we don't all know the same things and can't show up for the same solutions, then all of us stand to lose out. So it's an all or nothing game. We can't partly be in it, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're all in it for the same reason. Um, and so I think it's about coming up for the collective contacts and the best way to do that is Web3. So I'm so happy to be part of Outer, Outer Edge LA. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, you heard it here first, guys. Asher J, NFT Plazas. How do we change society? How do we change the world with Web3? And how can you show up for the world at large? You heard it here first. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>